You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our new website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for September 15th, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Jeff Zucker panel at Tina Brown's terribly exciting World Summit. Oh, wait, the opposite of that. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Tina Brown's fabulous World Summit on Women in Canada and Jeff yeah. Zucker. <laughs> Jeff Zucker. Although that's a thing. That's a real thing. It's we didn't make thing. that up. We I know did. we make up a lot of things on this podcast. <laughs> that's a real thing. The CNN's, um, the guy who put Jeffrey Lord on television, mm-hmm. uh, the guy gave Donald Trump a j- gazillion dollars worth of free advertising mm-hmm. uh, and now is bitching about Facebook being, you know, culpable for his election. Yeah, uh, right. because when you he has a, he, he lives at a very at a very on a, a very high pile of money, right? That's unreachable with conventional weapons. <laughs> um, and so he's sitting in a panel at Tina Brown, <laughs> Tina Brown's panel. Well, for, and this is the thing that interests me is that I've seen Tina Brown, you know, uh, live yeah, at a live convention, and uh-huh. uh, the 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 thing about Tina Brown is she is the um, more polished, uh, more media involved uh uh-huh. donald trump she is a yes, bullshitter she is, she is yes, just she is. a bullshitter she absolutely is and she will yep. say whatever is on trend and on fashion uh-huh. and that's where she is and and brand herself as i mean I, at the convention that i was at she was talking about uh, Newsweek going to the web and how terribly exciting it was that she was never going to write for uh, paper print ever, ever again. She was never no going doubt. to work with with uh, print media, actual print media ever again, because the opportunities that are available to wrap uh, content around advertising on the web yes. is Wrapping so... Around. <laughs> We did a whole show. Well, not a whole, a whole show. We did a... we did a little thing. Yeah, with Tina Brown, we could wrap those ads. It was called Cover. Her new magazine was called Cover. <laughs> cover, and it was just the cover. Just the cover. <laughs> um, and, and if you if you want a quick sampling of Tina Brown, she's a real person. Yeah. She ran uh, a whole bunch of magazines. I Into believe the she ground. also. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, she did it because um, she had a lot of money from a friend of hers who kept fronting her mm-hmm. large chunks of money to do this. Um, it really is. And uh, if you want to know, if you want a little slice of her, just go to YouTube and look up Bloosh Magazine from Parks and Rec. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. lifestyle magazine about choices we make. And yeah. and, and it's just uh, it's it's just empty calories. But she knows everybody. She's friends with everybody. Everybody knows her. She's the person, I believe, who put, you know, and when Andrew Sullivan needed a, a place to land, mm-hmm. uh, she put him on the Daily Beast and put him on salary because that's what you do. You put your, you know, you give your friends a paycheck, even though they suck at their job and they're terrible. They, they, they get, they get clicks. They get eyeballs. But she's also the person who's responsible for Garrison Keillor packing up his desk and leaving the New Yorker forever. <laughs> So people of principle who believe in ri- good writing and content yeah. being king, you know, over flash and advertising and revenue. And, you know, I mean, the thing is, Tina Brown is still standing after all these years because sure. it's about money. And well, that's what media is about. It's about it depends, money. It's it literally is who, you know, and the, yeah. and, it, yeah. and it, it is a small circle of people who make sure they have each other's backs. And, and there's no way that's the club. That's the club, and there's mm-hmm. the, and there's no way in, and there's and there's a lot of exits. If you fuck up, they will find a way to make you disappear. But as long as you play um, the game that they want you to play, as long as you you take the positions that you're supposed to take that are on your script, when you sit down at a panel, uh, you have a job for life. You don't have a conscience after that. You don't have much of a soul left over, but you will have a fairly comfortable life um, being a mouthpiece for whatever the status quo position is on any given subject on any given day. Mm-hmm. Um, and speaking of that, why don't we jump into our – well, you know we have a new sponsor. Oh, yes. I'm excited about our new sponsor. Um, uh, our, our new sponsors are growing like, like mushrooms pretty soon, like Cover Magazine. Uh, <laughs> this podcast will be nothing but ads. <laughs> 
Uh, nothing but but sponsors. Fake, fake ads. Fake, right. fake ads from fake sponsors that we just make up during the week because they make us laugh. But nonetheless, uh, we, we want to follow in Tina Brown's um, tradition and just make this all about ads. Uh, we'd like So we'd like to welcome our new sponsor, uh, it's Dead Gym. Uh, it's an association termination service. Are you a member of a club or a group or a team or whatever that should have died long ago but keep shambling on because no one has the guts to kill it? No need to dirty your hands. Let the association termination experts at It's Dead Gym do it for you. You know, I think I think Reince Priebus needs to give us a call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole lot of organizations that are basically dead wood and yeah. need to go. The Republican um, Party is one of them. Oh, no, they're vital. They're, 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 they're vital, vital and alive and have concern. a lot of money. <laughs> they that's just the don't thing. have a purpose they, they, anymore. You know. they, oh, they have a purpose. It's just not a purpose that you'll see in the New York Times at yeah. any point in the near yeah. future. It's, the purpose is still... to turn Donald Trump into an independent as quickly as possible. Yeah. Yeah, their purpose is to literally just grab and seize as much power as possible, um, make liberals cry, and and cut the government back to nothing, to mm-hmm. nothing but military expenditures. Their their goal is tax cuts for everything, for all occasions, for rich people. It doesn't matter who, what, when, where, why. Uh, and, and they get that. Yeah. 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 And they get that by telling uh, the meathead moron base of the Republican Party uh, whatever they want to whatever they want to hear. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's why this week the, this this controversy about what, how will the base react. <laughs> To to this sudden reversal of of on DACA, which may or may not exist, may not be real. I mean, who the fuck knows what you know President Stupid's going to say tomorrow? All I know is whatever he says tomorrow will contradict what he said today. Um, but Jonathan Alter, I was I was sort of half asleep um, listening to something on MSNBC probably. And Jonathan Alter was talking about amnesia. Mm-hmm. You know the amnesia that's going on in the system, and, and people just you know don't the shit that happened last week nobody remembers. And I did tweet him. He's and he will not reply. Um, because, you know, I'm not in his social circles. But um, amnesia is the plan. Yeah, yeah. Amnesia is the goal. Amnesia is not its not a bug. It's a feature. Mm-hmm. The, the idea that the meathead base of the Republican Party will remember anything next week that they believe this week is hilarious. Yeah. Because they don't, they don't care about anything. They don't know anything. They care about whatever the fuck Donald Trump says this week is what they believe this week. And that's been true for decades. It's been, yes. you know, it was... Whatever the fuck Rush Limbaugh said this week is what they believe this week. Mm-hmm. And uh, that leads us to a bunch of other topics for discussion that we're going to get into a little deeper. Well, but... I, th- I think it it brings up the, the first and most important thing, which, I, as I've already alluded to, yes. Donald Trump is a Republican. He's the yes. perfect Republican. He is the perfect Republican. He is the yeah. perfect, perfect Republican. Yes. Because he does exactly what the Republican base that's been trained by Fox News and right-wing media, he he does what they tell them him to do. Yeah. And so when a controversy comes up and it looks like you're in trouble, what do you say? Both sides. Both sides. And what, oh, but wait, it's Intifa and Nazis, and you're saying right. both. doesn't matter. Both. both sides is the excuse that got the Republican Party out of everything else. So right. I'm just going to say both sides, and that's going to solve the problem. And and this is the case with DACA as well, which is, well, it's not convenient for me to believe this one thing, this one thing I said and I repeated and so forth. And so we're just going to switch. We're going to switch and do something else and it's going to be fine. And, and the wall, same thing. Yeah. He's just change, change your story. Well, we Iraq had WMDs. Well, it's about nation building. Well, it's about democracy in the region. Well, it's about protecting women voters. Well, it's about making sure women in Saudi Arabia can drive. I right. mean, the, the excuse <laughs> and the changes yeah. and the and the the lies but then well we know we have a new story yeah. and uh <laughs> you and i i'm gonna i'm gonna let you talk and get onto our script now but uh i did like the moment my favorite moment podcastable moment with us this week yes was watching lawrence o'donnell read donald trump's tweets yes and it was, was- it was the night that they, the they, DACA announcement from Chuck and Nancy had come out, right? And it's so the this, night they the night they drove old Dixie down. It's, a, it's earth-shattering yeah. news yeah. that Chuck and Nancy have gotten Donald Trump to cave on DACA, and and the wall is not included in the final decision. And I I looked at that and thought, okay, well that might not mean that he's excluded the wall altogether. They, I thought they really carefully worded that to outrage the most Trump supporters they could. Yes, yes I thought so, exactly the same thing. 
But uh, they, then Lawrence was talking just about this and Chuck and Nancy and DACA and the reversal and so forth. And then realized Donald Trump is tweeting about Hillary Clinton. Why is he doing that? Yeah, that seems really weird. Why is and he doing then, that? And then, okay, well, you keep monitoring Hillary's, these Hillary tweets. We're going to keep talking about DACA, but it's, he just seems to be tweeting randomly about crooked Hillary, crooked Hillary and whatever that, whatever that's about. Let's yeah. move on and talk more about DACA. And I went, oh, come on, Drift Glass. Switch to Fox. <laughs> yes. And sure enough, we switch over to Tucker Carlson for, you know, a brief second. And what is Tucker talking about? You know, the Hillary Clinton blame game. <laughs> Hillary Clinton blame game. That server, that email server that nearly killed thousands of Americans. Yeah, right, right. And Hillary right. Clinton, see, crooked and wide investigation. Oh, my God. And it's it re it literally is a this sort of closed um, sewage system. Yep. Where they just keep recycling the shit around and around and around. And it's like, oh, he's tweeting that because he's sitting on the, the shitter at home, mm -hmm. um, eating fried chicken, watching Fox and tweeting about it. And live it. tweeting Fox News, which is what the president of the United States now does in the evening. Yep. And that's why he's the perfect Republican. He's exactly. a true blue. He's a more Republican than Paul Ryan. He's more Republican than Mitch McConnell. You know why? Because he believes to the extent that Donald Trump is capable of believing anything other than how do I relieve this idiot of their money mm -hmm. uh, and get away with it as, as sleazily as possible so I can have more shit in my life? And how can I get these assholes to bow down and praise me? Um, he believes what he sees on Fox and Friends and Sean Hannity. And he calls that the news. That just, just like, like every other Republican in America. And yeah. that's what that's what the Republican Party has spent billions of dollars and decades training their base to do. Mm -hmm. Believe every single batshit thing that flies out of Sean Hannity's mouth, every goddamn thing Rush Limbaugh says, everything they read on Breitbart, and anyone who doesn't say those things or believe those things or know those things is a rhino, is a right, squish, right. is a liberal, is a socialist. Well, Donald Trump is that guy. He is the absolute distilled end product of the thing you were trying to create for the last 30 years. And, and now, and from, course, my, from my perspective, I think we've said this before, but from my perspective, the interesting part of that story is not what you just said. The interesting part is, why doesn't Lawrence say that? Yeah, Why that, doesn't Lawrence then say, let's just check what, what our competition over at Fox is talking about. Oh, yeah, look, they are talking about yes. Hillary Clinton. He's just live tweeting Fox. OK, we can move on and talk about. And that's the story. If, would you, would you if like to know every why? Every night it was, what is the president doing right now? He's live tweeting Fox. Mm -hmm. That would be a totally different media environment than the one we have today. You, you, and I, will, I will now uh, enact it for you. This is a theater of the mind. You can only hear my voice. But- <laughs> I, I'm now Lawrence O'Donnell. Uh, I, I have just said for the second or third night in a row, let's check in with what President Stupid's done. Oh, look, he's all he's doing is literally live tweeting what they're doing on Fox. Mm -hmm. And then live in the studio, bling, bling, hello. Yes, this is Mr. Phil Griffin for, for Lawrence O'Donnell. Yeah. I have two I have two words for you, possibly three. I didn't know her that well. Melissa Harris Perry. Yeah. Now, how about you shut the fuck up and get back to what you're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. which is not pissing off people who I have to go to lunch with. Yeah. You know, my ex my friends at the country club, I don't want to have to walk in there and, and you know, we we settled this, you know, five years ago with, with Keith Olbermann. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, can, you can talk shit about, about, about those people all you want, but you can't call them out directly by name over and over again. You can use their video footage. You can roll your eyes. If you're, if you're Rachel Maddow, you can get away with a little bit more than that. But we're not going to Only because her ratings are number one in the country yeah. right now. Yeah. But we're not yeah. going to war with, with CNN, with Jeffrey Lord, with Fox News, because... We're all in this together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that's why <laughs> Megyn Kelly has a job at NBC. That's yeah. why Greta Van Susteren was hired by fucking MSNBC. That's why she But Hugh when her Hugh ratings were never going to work no. on MSNBC, she's were. out. So of it course is a were. ratings game. Yeah, yeah. But that's why Hugh Hewitt has a job at, you know, the farm report at 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, right. Um, right. Because it is imperative for whatever – sick fucking perverted reason uh, that Andy Lack has in his dark little heart and Phil Griffin has in his dark little heart it is imperative to them that they collect all of the awful, the O-F-F-A-L, the cast off, the shit that falls off the Fox News wagon and stuff their network with it no matter mm -hmm. what, you know, in, in sideways. Mm -hmm. And they hand him a script and they tell him, you know, you, here's how far you can go on this side of the fence, but no further. But it's a puppet show. It's a game. And that's what I find terribly offensive is that, you know, 
I get lied to every day, so do you. I, yeah. I, it offends me when you, you insult my intelligence by lying so incompetently. What, when you assume that I can't figure out what you're doing behind that screen when you know there's a big bright light behind you and I can see what you're doing. Um, yeah. Anyway, would you like to do Week in Review or would you like to do our topic list? Go ahead and do Week in Review first. Um, I don't know if our listeners really would depend on us for news. I, and that's not why we do Week in Review. It no. really is sort of to record the atrocities and also to give us a, a sounding board of if there is if something comes to mind that we need to talk about <laughs> while yeah. we're reviewing the news. Well, and this is, so much th- happens so fast these days. We really and, need to. And this is that. part of what we have learned as bloggers. Mm-hmm. Um, we have collective pretty good archival memories of things we were writing 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. 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 And that's what makes it possible for us to do this podcast, quite frankly, right. is that every day uh, uh, Blue Gal and I and a bunch of other bloggers and writers out there who are laboring in the vineyards for you people, we do it for you people, um, read the newspaper and watch the news and write things down. And it might be one post or it might be two, but I guarantee you, if you if you if an individual person has written one or two things in a day, a that's a lot, and b they've read dozens of shit. I mean, you know, this is what I do in addition to twenty other things. But what it has given me and given has given a lot of us on the left who study this as an avocation or as part of what we do every day, uh, part of our calling is I can remember Bush Cheney policies from two thousand and five. Mm-hmm. I can mm-hmm. remember Alberto Gonzalez. I can remember you know right. I can remember right. uh, Abu Ghraib, and that right. means. I can um, knowledgeably speak of the timeline of things and how things got to be the way they are, which, for just to keep my own sanity, is incredibly useful when Tom Edsel is hired <laughs> by the New York Times to write, oh, this all went to shit when Donald Trump was elected. Yeah, oh, my God, can yeah. you believe Republicans are revising their whole idea of what's right and wrong backwards, forwards, inverse and stuff? Uh, now that Donald Trump is in office. And there, like, there are about seven people this week who've done exactly that. Charlie yes. Cook of the Cook Report yep. was on with with uh, uh, Chuck Todd and did the same thing. You know, yeah. we had we had divisions in America during uh, when in the lead up to the Iraq war. We were all together on 9-11. And then, you know, whether or not to invade Iraq became controversial. Right. And nothing about lying us into war. Nothing about no. WMDs. No. No, you know, th- that that context is not allowed to be part of the both sider conversation no because it ruins everything and peggy yeah. noonan you know famously yeah. Yeah. after the civil war everybody got along and everything worked out great <laughs> can i have my pulitzer prize now please <laughs> money please and gin yeah. in the other hand and, yeah. but that's what protects us from that memory hole because it's waiting for everyone is no 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 i have already written about extensively the way the republican party reverses its core moral beliefs mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every time the, there's an election, mm-hmm. every time the White House changes hands, the Republican Party goes from believing one set of crazy shit exactly. to a completely opposite set of crazy shit, and nobody talks about it. Well, and, and the, the shock, shock that evangelicals who thought that moral misgivings while Barack Obama was president would, you know, grounds for impeachment and removal from office are right. now fine. Right. Just fine. Fine. And it's it is the same. But it people. has been that way for as long as you and I have been writing about politics. These it are was... the same people who yep. blamed 9-11 on gays and the ACLU. Yep. These are the same people who worship George Bush because he was a good Christian man, even though he tortured people and lied us into war. These are the same people who screamed for Bill Clinton's blood for a blowjob. These are the same people who lined up against Barack Obama, frankly, because he's black. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so there is no mystery to those of us who remember the past because that – but the game is uh, at the media level, at the corporate media level, thou shalt not invoke what happened before last week because yep. it fucks everything up. And so that's our job. Our job is to be the little bit of sand in the machine and, <laughs> and this sort of week in review because things really are happening faster than they used to and, they and are. crazy things are falling out of the sky uh, yeah. is to keep us sort of intact and frankly so that we can go back. 10 weeks from now and check our notes mm-hmm. or check our podcast. Oh, that's right. I didn't write about that. Um, I didn't write about the fucking band, Steve Bannon interview this week, but no. it was all over the place and it was very important. I didn't write about what a, a, a loser asshole Charlie Rose is, what a weak yeah. Yeah. Uh, wiener Charlie Rose is for just letting him get away with murder, but it happened and it's important. So let me blitz through the news for the, for the purpose of, you know, memorializing this week and for future generations who might want to know what was on our minds. Um, Number one, congressional Democrats told Robert Mueller that Michael Flynn 
failed to disclose his, a trip to the Middle East in 2015. Uh, Michael Flynn lied. Mm-hmm. And he should go to jail. You know what? His son is also a liar who should yep. go to jail. So yep. this literally is a Russian novel. It's entitled Fathers and Sons. <laughs> and, and have Donald Trump and his son-in-law. You have Michael Flynn and his son. You have Paul Manafort and his son. It's This is what happens when you have an incestuous, um, aristocratic class who believe their progeny is above the law. And every one of these people is worse than their forebear. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. is is sleazier or more hollow or more more vacant or more more paranoid. Um, that's the way it goes. And um, that's why Ivanka Ivanka yeah. was on vacation in Vermont with her very handsome, fabulously rich husband. I was break from all while of this. while he uh, while her, her while Daddy uh, both sidered Nazism and Intifa for the first time. Now he's done it again <laughs> since yeah, then. He did it yesterday. <laughs> Walked back. Has to re- re-embrace them, and uh, but when it happened for the first time, and this broke on the news, uh, Ivanka said she had to tune out and go open a book, crack open a book, because you know I'm on vacation. Yeah, mine... I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Jared deal with it on the phone, because we're in Vermont and we're on vacation. Hey, Ivanka. And as I I put in my post a picture of the Barack Obama administration, the entire staff that's sitting there yeah. on the White House lawn with their arms crossed, watching Donald Trump get a tour of the White House, and like, oh, did Ivanka get to tune out? That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> How nice for her. Yeah. And by the way, yeah. uh, Ivanka, cover magazine isn't a book. Yeah. <laughs> it's just covers of magazines. just covers of magazines. Uh-huh. But uh, she could, she did, uh, you know, whatever book she cracked open, and uh, Financial Times, the interview that they did with her, also pointed out that uh, it's not her job to publicly disagree with Daddy. Uh, she's it, there is no I in team. Right. <laughs> yes, I have a whole. Uh, and so she she may not get what what she wants in terms of women and you know all the all the uh, things that she wanted to bring to White House policy, uh, which basically benefit women like her. And right. we we've known that since last summer. So yeah. that's the way that goes. And she doesn't disagree with him in public or apparently in private or apparently ever. Right. Um, her job is to be, you know, an empty sack full of brand. Yep. And yep. and to, to and look, look good and to, and look, to look good, good and to yep. be poised and to speak yep. in a poised way that daddy paid to make possible for her. Right. Uh, and if she were just the um, ambassador for Trump properties in Dubai, she'd be Ex- fine. Exactly. If she, if she was simply, uh, you know, one of the Johnson girls, if she was one of LBJ's daughters, you know, going to the opera and having what? having a makeover from some fabulous makeup act- actor, you know, makeup artist. Right. Uh, fine, but no, she decided, and her it. daddy decided that she would be on staff right. at the White House. And I don't care if she's paid or not; she has security clearance and she has access to the Oval Office as an employee. That means she works for us. And her and her and her husband. Yeah. And they and get to go where they want, and do what they yep. want, and whisper. And that means she's answerable to us. Yep. And I know that that nobody in the stupid administration thinks that because they are tyrants. That's how despots think. Um, so the, the injunction against going after the kids, well, if you put the kids on payroll yep. and, and you give them power to yep. fuck up other people's lives, then they're not your kids anymore. They're part of the problem. Right. And you all have to go. <laughs> uh, you all have to go. Speaking of which, uh, Donald Trump, uh, the Trump administration is thinking about lowering the refugee quota. Uh, yeah. to the lowest level since the 80s because there's just too many brown people around for Donald Trump's uh, to be feel comfortable with. He's also uh, eliminating the uh, uh, refugee program for Central American children. Yeah. And uh, that is turning out to be not as large a problem as you might think, which relates to, and I'm, I'm sorry to make you jump ahead. No, no. It relates to local news in uh, University of Illinois uh-huh. here locally in Springfield. Why don't you yeah. tell them what happened there? Uh, University of, there's two, there's one good thing, one bad thing. Uh, the University of Illinois at Springfield uh, is sponsoring a program to help DACA students, mm-hmm. provide them with legal assistance and direct them to where they need to go. There's a, a Welcome Cities group that is forming or has formed locally to try to figure out how to do rapid response, how to, how to answer questions, uh, because answering uh, questions about someone's legal immigration status is incredibly tricky. And the wrong answer could really mess them up. So they're taking, they're being very careful about it. But I'm very proud that my community is standing up and coming together to try to do what they can to protect these students and, and have rallies and so on and so forth. That's the good stuff. 
The bad stuff is, uh, although local uh, enrollment rates remain constant, um, UIS overall enrollment's down like nearly 9%. Mm -hmm. The reason is international students. Yep. They're not coming to the United States anymore. And you, I don't blame them. I don't blame them either. Why would you come here? You know, the the thing that struck me, you and I were watching a a controversial movie from the uh, 1940s last night called (laughs) uh, In Which Nazis Nazis Are Actually Shot, uh, (laughs) which is terrible. I mean, you know, the uh, the original Antifa is Rick Blaine. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But in this movie, this the thing that made me literally a tear come to my eye. In this movie, everyone wants to get to America. Yep. America is this dream. Everyone in Casablanca is rehearsing what they're going to say when they get to America. And they talk about America and they think about America. And they're just they, – they, they all sit around sipping and talking about how good it's going to be. And, and the young woman who's willing to sell her body mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to get the money for her, her and her new husband to get out of Nazi-occupied Germany and go to America. If you only knew what it meant to us to go to America. And uh, it, it – that's not us anymore. Nope. Um, yep. it, it, it could be, it should be. I, for some people, it sure is. For some people, it's much, much, much worse. For most people, it's much worse. But we took a giant shit on that as a country when we elected the worst person in the world to be the president. Yep. And when we let a bunch of uh, no-necks and morons and xenophobes and homophobes and racists and anti-science fools. And um, very privileged people who thought that it wouldn't matter if they voted right. against a woman. Right. Or Clinton or whatever it is, you know, because they're both equally bad. And and besides, he's not going to win anyway. So I'm going to throw away my vote because I don't want to be stained with that. You know, it makes me feel dirty voting for someone who's less than perfect. Who is not my perfect, perfect, perfect candidate. It makes me feel dirty. Well, fuck you. Now. Great. You get to stand at Ellis Island. Now you get to stand at the Statue of Liberty. Explain to those people uh, Mm -hmm. that you just couldn't be bothered. Right. To stop the fascist from taking over the White House, you thought, you know, and I said oh, this last. It's not going to affect you anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. Unless, yeah. and unless some, unless someone from the campaign personally came and sweet talked to you, you just thought, I'll vote for the Nazi. Mm-hmm. I'll vote for mm-hmm. the pussy grabbing white supremacist. Because really, what the fuck difference does it make? Well, it turns out it does make a difference, and those people need to shut up. Yeah. Uh, but here's one of the consequences of that: the Supreme Court just blocked two rules that would have forced Texas to redraw its congressional state districts. And you know why they got to do that? Because the Gorsuch rule. (laughs) Because Mitch McConnell stole um, a seat from Merrick Garland Mm -hmm. and gave it to President Stupid. And President Mm -hmm. Stupid appointed a reliable Heritage Foundation, uh, honorable, true conservative who who just wants to call balls and strikes to the Supreme Court. And now we're paying for it. And we're going to pay it for it for the next 30 years. Yep. And that's the way that goes. And if you couldn't be troubled, again, to get out and get off your ass and, and put your halo aside for five fucking minutes to vote for someone that you didn't like but who wasn't a fucking monster, this is on you. And this is why they all have to go, because if Hillary Clinton had won, that seat would still be empty today. Is it that Supreme Court seat yeah. would still oh, they, be empty today. It'd hold it for four years. Yep. And, and we yep. would be having and – and the Congress that can't – bother to hold really, really important hearings unless, they, uh, unless they're at the point of a gun, we would be in the first week of impeachment hearings for Hillary Clinton. Oh, we would be done. I mean, they would have started those in yep. January or February. Yeah. yeah. And the Department right. of Justice is, won't bring civil rights charges against Baltimore police who arrested Freddie Gray. Mm-hmm. And the cop, the former cop, uh, who was charged in the death of Anthony Smith in St. Louis, was found not guilty. So you know what? Um, the shit that if you are black in this country, you have to go through uh, remains unchanged, except for the fact that the attorney general of the United States now thinks that that's all just fine. Yep. That's all just fine. That's groovy, cheeky baby. And, yep. And the only thing that breaks his heart is that Donald Trump called him an idiot to his face. That yep. doesn't bother him. Yep. His racism, his xenophobia, his absolutely abhorrent Klansman behavior that he smirks about, that doesn't bother him. Being called an idiot by President Stupid, that bothers him. So maybe we, we are recording this on Friday, yeah. and last night we watched Rachel Maddow and Hillary Clinton talk about North Korea, yep. and the future of the State Department, and the future of our politics, and how we confront this uh, immediate danger to our democracy in the White House. And the male part of the political world was saying, oh, my God, can you believe what Donald Trump called Jeff Sessions? Oh, Oh my God. 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 So I I found that uh, ironic. (laughs) Um, 
Do you want to talk about? Oh, go right ahead with your list. Oh, just, uh, just zipping through it. The, the Trump Voter Suppression Commission is every bit as bad as you thought it was going to be, mm-hmm. uh, and worse. Uh, a bunch of uh, bigoted old white guys um, uh, deciding that black people really are are three fifths of a citizen, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we should make it just that much harder for people who don't look like them and who won't vote for them uh, to vote. Mm-hmm. And and th- the question is, well, of course it's all horrible and it's all probably unconstitutional. It's all lawful. But if if the Cops on the beat won't enforce the law, and the judges won't enforce the law. And I'm talking about the attorney general, the president of the United States, all the people who systemically are supposed to protect those people are are have turned against them. Then all then the Constitution really is just a piece of paper. But but drift glass, there's another problem, which is uh, on the other side, Democrats are moving left. We are. This is insane. So, so that, insane. you know, on the, on the other hand, you know, Democrats have their own problem. They're moving left. And that's equal to what is happening to voting rights in America. On the so, right, you have Nazis. On the left, you have people trying to figure out the fastest way to single payer or universal, <laughs> or healthcare. universal healthcare. Exactly. It's exactly. crazy. It's pretty much the same thing. Um <laughs> We're not the, making that up, by no, the way. No, we're not. If, you've, if is, you don't watch cable news, literally this is what bad. is being said. It you know, the Democrats bad. have their problem, too. They're moving left. They're moving left. And oh. it is. And yeah. Donald, oh, and we just, and uh, I'm going to skip ahead to the Bannon interview, the, the fucking Bannon interview, the Steve Bannon interview, um, was awful. And, and Charlie Rose, again, is a, is just a friggin' milk toast um, who, who could be rolled by anybody um, and is a corporate, you know, hack. Uh, and let let Bannon talk. What the whole interview didn't talk once about the Mercer family, not once, yeah. not one yeah. fucking time. You know where? Why aren't you just a fucking blogger living un- under a bridge? Where do you get all these resources from? Well, I get them from a crackpot right wing billionaire who funds everything. I and that's how come a crackpot right wing racist asshole like Steve Bannon got to be a senior advisor to the president of the United States. Yeah. And that never once came up with Charlie Rose. Because I'm assuming there was some sort of arrangement before the oh, show. Sure. Uh, the things sure. we're not going to talk about. Just like Mr. Robot. Absolutely. You know, we have, Just we like have Mr. A, Robot. Script, a script agreement. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Um, uh, Trump, uh, we, we learned this week that Russian uh, actors, Russian folks, Russian uh, agents uh, did, in fact, remotely organize and promote pro Trump anti immigrant protests on Facebook. They were all over Facebook. They were crawling all the way through it. They were, they were wedging themselves in there. They were posing and modeling. They were. Absolutely in up to their eyebrows in this last election, um, influencing everywhere they could. And any pretense that that didn't happen or that it didn't matter or that it was somehow just marginal uh, is only now held by people who shouldn't have been elected in the first place. And today, Facebook announced that they are uh, changing their algorithms so that people that want to buy ads on Facebook based on Jew hating, literally quote unquote Jew hyphen hating. Uh, can't do that no more. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that, that's the morally right thing to do, they decided, I guess. Uh, there are apparently 2,300 people on Facebook mm-hmm. who have identified in their in their bios mm-hmm. that they are, quote unquote, Jew haters or want to burn people or want to see certain religions die off. And uh, there were people that wanted to buy ads to direct at those people. Right. And I'm sure some of those purchasers were Russian. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is all unfolding, and uh, we'll see what happens with Facebook. I think Facebook is, I, I, you know, I hate to agree with Jeff Zucker. I know. But Facebook needs to be brought before Congress and uh, heavily regulated yes. in terms of well, I, I what, agree what, what they allow people to see. I agree with them. And CNN needs to be brought in front of Congress, too. Absolutely. I want to hear why yeah. Jeff Lord, why you hired him, why you let a liar lie to the American people every night right. during the election season and make it about both sides. Why? And, and I want to I want you under oath, Jeff Zucker, answering mm-hmm. those questions. And that will never happen because no. he's more powerful yes, but, than Congress. But it is that is a dangerous, dangerous thing. It is uh, that they gave equal voice to insanity. Mm-hmm. And also, how many minutes did they have an empty Trump podium? Yeah. On, on the screen with Donald Trump waiting in the wings for them to have that to make it look because he understands television to make it look like he's important enough to wait for. So we are I, now waiting for him. I can yeah. make them wait. They're yeah. going to wait, point the camera at an empty podium and they'll wait. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Meanwhile, and he understands branding, too. Yes, he does. Uh, and, and he did say that if you talk about branding. Uh, thanks to the Hurricane Irma, no brand has improved more than the United States Coast Guard. Really, that's true. It's just yeah, true. Their yeah, brand, your yeah, brand, is so much yeah. better now. 
I think we and, talked about that last week, actually. We but, might. Yeah. We might break well. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to leave it there because yeah, there's a, there's just a, a jumble more news, and I don't. But there are certain larger issues mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. that float upon this sea of of fragmented news and craziness um, that we can observe and we can we can comment on and we can hopefully build vocabulary around to help us all understand what happened, what is happening to us, and where we are going and what we can do about it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So let's begin with Charles Blow, shall Charles we? Charles Blow wrote a column this week called Soul Survival in Trump's Hell, mm-hmm. uh, published on September 11th. And uh, the, the important golden nugget in this article uh, was that the, and I'm quoting here, the lesser of two evils argument between Clinton and Trump is poppycock. The choice people faced in November was the difference between dim light and absolute darkness. There really was no comparison. The false parody was a media concoction and a Russian propaganda weapon. Right. Uh, and he talks about uh, people who felt they were being forced to choose between the lesser of two evils need to realize the staggering magnitude of the gap between those two evils. Yeah, that's the and thing. They, they didn't do it. No. And they, they and refused so to do it. They refused, they refused well, to do it. They didn't yep. skip over. They didn't do it, you know, innocently. Yep. Yep. They refused to do it. Yep, yep. Uh, and and then he goes on to talk about surviving hell because the Trump uh, presidency mm-hmm. for him and for many Americans, for I would say most Americans, uh, is hell. And he talks about how he has to go to a museum every once in a while and take a break. And he needs to, and, and it's not a Ivanka Trump break. It's, you know, I just need mental space to figure out what to do next oh. to fight this. Uh, and uh, I, I found it um, a good article, but I also found it a little bit infuriating. Uh-huh. Um, it, it read to me like uh, a journal entry that needed to be written. For him, for himself, yes, to heal whatever uh, is going on in his, his head, and perhaps it helped other people. Uh, I, my mental state didn't that particular day jibe huh. with needing that, yeah, and uh, I tend to be kind of frontline unless I'm. I'm like our cat. I'm either 60, to 60 miles an hour or zero. I'm either, <laughs> the, the few moments that I'm just devastated and crying in front of my computer, uh-huh. uh, you pull me away and I take a, a little break and come back. But uh, most of the time, I'm ready to fight. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we're going to do Bible bitch now. Bible bitch. That's not scriptural. Fired up. Ready to go. Response to this of, uh, you know, this is hell and here's how we have to, I want to have he says, I want to have faith in America, but I won't, I won't know if this faith is well-placed until I know the results of the next election. Right. That's why it's faith. Yeah. And um, I, I wonder, I mean, I always wonder when people talk that way about uh, this not being the first time in world history that this has ever happened. Because right. you look at ancient Rome and you look at some of the leaders of ancient Rome and how crazy they were yeah. and what people had to survive in Nazi Germany, in you know, in Vietnam, in North Korea right now, Stalinist and, Russia. Yeah, you just think, okay, you know, yeah, the, right. I mean, we were we were watching right before Casablanca. Doctor Zhivago was on, yeah, and yeah. you know, the history of dying in the snow is what that is about. Uh-huh. Um, so I wanted to go back to uh, Romans because this is what came to my mind as I was reading Charles Blow. And I'm going to read uh, the King James Version first and then read what the message, which is the Bible in modern language, says. Uh-huh. Romans 8, 38 and 39. I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. This is somebody who had been in yeah. prison over and over again and uh, knew what he was talking about in terms of feeling a separateness or feeling punished. Uh, And so the modern version is, do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way, not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, 
not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in scripture. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. Them's fighting words. Right. That's what I want to say. Them's fighting words. That's not just, you know, hide. Mm-hmm. That, that is not a message to hide. It's not a, it's, <laughs> and it's not a, a little, it's not a song. It's not Jesus loves me, this I know. Right. It's, right. it's no. I am absolutely yes. sure and certain. And March I, And I'm going forward. forward. I'm marching forward. Forward. Yeah. Resist. Yeah. Forward. This is your armor. You've got it on. Go for it. Yeah. Don't think that you have an excuse for for uh, not tangling with what's going on. Right. We have been called to fight. Yeah. And liberals are blessed. <laughs> it, it, it's hard sometimes to remember. Number one, we're blessed. We're blessed with memory. We're blessed with the ability to remember what happened. While the rest of the world is in a, a zone of forgetting. And... We've been blessed with the memory. We've been blessed with a voice. And uh, frankly, I, I think it's really important. Two things are really important. One is realize that you don't have to react to everything. No. Uh, it's kind have, of a bad idea to do that. Yeah. You have to pick an issue that matters to you and push that issue. That's mm-hmm. so much more important than fighting Trump because, these, as we have been talking about for this whole podcast, Trump is a Republican and Republicans are the problem. And Republican policies are terrible. And those policies aren't going away no. when Donald Trump is removed from office or gets term limited in eight years. I hope that doesn't happen. And the reason those policies, those horrible policies, are raised to the level of respectability is because mm-hmm. the collaborators and quizlings and fifth columnists Mm -hmm. and go along to get along stooges in the media keep doing it. Right. And there's no one on the inside swinging the camera around and pointing it at them and saying, stop it. Stop Mm -hmm. comparing Bernie Sanders to Donald Trump. There is no comparison. Or or Bannon. Yes. Right. Or Bannon. Yeah, Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. So don't think you have to react to everything. On the other hand, don't think that we are in this uh, sort of huddled minority of weakness. And I I realize it's easy to feel that way, especially if you're in a red state right now, uh, that somehow you are so outnumbered and that that everything is hopeless uh, and that you're just one little person in the world. We're the majority, folks. Yes, yes, we are. We're the moral majority. We are the moral majority. And I don't mean that Jerry Falwell style of telling other people what to do. We are, but we are the moral majority. And we have to start acting like it and pushing our Congress around to do what we want, because this is a democracy. And I I do think that the Trump presidency has woken a lot of people up. Mm -hmm. Uh, Several people who speak the truth on television have said, you know, the resistance is really having quite an impact. Yes, it is. (laughs) So... uh, the fact that Chuck and Nancy sort of have a uh, grounding by which to fight this president, mm-hmm. uh, they know what they stand for in terms of DACA. They know what they stand for in terms of uh, the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's not it's not uh, something that they lie awake at night trying to figure out. Well, and, and the that's media a... wants to make the Democrats not stand for anything right this minute, which is. Bullshit. And that's a really good, um, quick litmus test mm-hmm. of, of whatever you're reading. If you're reading mm-hmm. something, uh, and I'm going to go back to this Tom Edsel article, uh, New York Times, because I wrote about it, and I feel obliged to whore my own work as and long as I have And you're just like David, David Brooks. You're I just going to read your own column to I'm everybody. absolutely not going to do that. <laughs> not going to do that. <laughs> but it, it, this is a column where everything is reduced to the level of it's just a bunch of teams, uh, just people mm-hmm. fighting. There's... Uh, But uh, right at the end of the article, um, he says, American politics is less a competition of ideas and more a struggle between two teams. Uh Uh, In other words, the election has become a primal struggle and political competition has devolved into an atavistic spectacle. Uh, There's no way to compromise because there's no way to compromise no matter what temporary accommodations professional politicians make, period. But it's no longer a competition of ideas. It's just two And that person is not the mother of a disabled kid. Well... (laughs) On Medicaid. First of all, yes. Second of all, uh, American politics is definitely 
a competition of ideas. But yep. it's, these are not ideas you want to talk about in the right. New York Times. Right. You are dedicated to, to extracting, to draining all factual and moral judgment away from picking which team is right and which team is wrong. Mm-hmm. Once you start doing that, you go down a path that demands that you take action against the Republican Party. Right. There's no, and you be there's no accountable for your actions in the media. And then you right. become a partisan and then you become irrelevant. You know, a crazy liberal who talks about this shit all the time. But it is it is pathological to, at this point in time, in 2017, with Donald Trump as president of the United States, that the media would still be obsessed with saying – Let's not talk about the values or virtues or facts of anything. Let's mm-hmm. just say one team believes one thing, one team believes another, and there are extremes on both of them, and there's some sort of moderate middle, and if we could just all agree on the moderate middle, then that will be fine. And, and that's if, what Chuck Todd is doing when, every day. When you find someone saying that, know that person is lying to you, and they mm-hmm. know they're lying to you, and the person who signs their paycheck knows they're lying to you, and they're doing it for a goddamn reason. Mm-hmm. Because the only people who are advantaged when that lie is told are Republicans. Right. The only people who win when everybody is punished because one person burned down a building is the person who burns down the building. Right. And right. that's and the other thing I want to say to summarize the Bible bitch portion of the show, for, yes. for those of you out there who might uh, be inclined towards shorter prayers. Uh, I'm going to give you this quote by Voltaire. I have never made but one prayer to God, a very short one. Oh, Lord, make my enemies ridiculous. (laughs) And God granted it. The Uh the other secret weapon we have is our our enemies are fucking morons. They're stupid. They believe incredibly dumb things, and they're completely predictable. Their actions Mm -hmm. are not mysterious in any way. Everything they do is utterly predictable. Um, And... That's what gives us an advantage. What we need is better organizational skills, frankly, uh, mm-hmm. and people mm-hmm. who know how to talk to other humans in the language of English mm-hmm. as opposed to mm-hmm. the language of policy detail. Uh, mm-hmm. And they need, you need, we need more money. I mean, the, the, we need a better uh, – Hillary Clinton, by the way, as we segue into her book, said all of this. Yes, she did. Um, yep. yep. And I, I wrote in our notes of Hillary Clinton's book, which we do own. Yep. And thank you for the per- person who offered to send us a copy. Uh, we, we have one. Yep. Um, Hillary's book is boringly competent and accurate. Yep. <laughs> and uh, the interviews that we've listened to with her uh, are uh, competent and accurate. And uh, she is telling the truth. Yes. I hope that people heard her last night on Rachel Maddow say that she's never running for office again. Yep. Uh, I knew that was true, but uh, that that uh, always changes how people feel about Hillary Clinton, yes. which I, I know she finds uh, intriguing, and yep. I do too. Oh, when, when she was Secretary uh, of State, she had a 75% approval rating. And every Republican in Congress loved her She was the, the most yep. respected uh, political figure in the world, I believe. Mm-hmm. Certainly the most respected mm-hmm. woman in the world at the time for years, for, you know, mm-hmm. repeatedly. The minute she stepped into the political arena and the minute the Republican attack machine kicked into high gear and, frankly, the liberal attack machine. Mm-hmm. The, the, mm-hmm. And, and we're not going to say who they are, but you all know who they are. Um, and the mainstream media decided they would had to level the playing field. And this is yeah, literally what the Matthew yeah. Dowd said. Uh, every yeah. time he's he since deleted the tweet that he did this in, but mm-hmm. he. But he, the responses, his pissy responses to people who attacked him, like Paul Krugman, are still out there for history to enjoy. His, <laughs> his predicate was every time you talk about Donald Trump's sexual predation, you have to talk about Hillary Clinton's emails because they're the same thing. Uh-huh. That person is the chief political analyst of ABC News and mm-hmm. had, makes a living saying crazy, dumb, both siders shit like that and blocking people like me who yeah. say, why do you keep lying to the American public? Well, and, and Chris Saliza is the other one yes. who said uh, it wasn't Hillary's emails that were the problem. It was her response That's to the email story that and was the problem. what she was wearing. You know, she was asking uh-huh. for it. And, and uh, you know, <laughs> he did not say that. No. But, but it's the moral equivalent. You might as well have because the number of uh, Chris Saliza Washington Post articles about Hillary's emails – Far surpassed many, many other people's. Yes. And uh, this was his obsession for months and months. And as long as... He will never take responsibility for what he did. Which is also something... How he performed his job. Which is also something that 
Uh, in Hillary Clinton's book, she takes plenty of responsibility mm -hmm. for her mm -hmm. own campaign and her own behavior and her own actions and a bunch of other things. And if you've heard otherwise, you're being lied to. But what she does point out is that the media will not take any responsibility for mm -hmm. anything it did. And mm -hmm. that is absolutely typical of our media going back as long as I can remember. Yep. Um, and and she also calls out Fox News by name Yep. Uh, as state run media and a right wing Propaganda machine, Propaganda. not the and says news. The left, and says the left doesn't have one. And we have nothing. Have we have no tool on our side to push back against anything like that. We do. It's called the Professional Left Podcast. And she should come on our show. She totally. Well, she will. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, and, <laughs> no, and she won't. when you said uh, we were going to talk about the book everyone's talking about, I assumed you meant uh, Dinesh Tefelin's The Big Lie, exposing <laughs> the Nazi roots of the American left, because Dinesh Tefelin, uh is making a, a, a good living selling um, shit on a shingle to people dumb enough to listen to him. Honestly, it is it is proof positive that anybody can have a book if they're willing to tell right-wing lies. Oh, yeah. Oh, And, believe and me. Ten Grain calls him divorced espousa. Oh, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> well, Ten Grain's a smarter person than me by about <laughs> four point. But the point being, there is a market, there is a, there is a rich marketplace, a subsidized wingnut welfare yep. farm where people like Dinesh D'Souza can make a living writing bullshit. And people like mm -hmm. Ann Coulter have a column in my local paper right? because someone right. on my local paper thinks it is their responsibility to make sure both sides are heard from. Mm -hmm. And Ann mm -hmm. Coulter, to their mind, I assume they've never read her. They have no idea what a hateful, vicious gorgon she is, how often she lies, how, how her books are full of just bile. They think that's one side of our political spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. And that we need to balance Charles Blow out with Ann Coulter. Cause Ann Coulter, you know, yeah. And that's the culture we have to destroy, frankly, to mm -hmm. move ahead. Um, Let's talk for a minute about uh, Bernie Sanders uh, and the Medicare for All. And yes. then uh, end with uh, Hurricane as metaphor, yes. Irma as metaphor. Yes. And, um, and, and remind everybody, you are the moral majority and the liberal media. And okay. we appreciate your support. We really do. Uh, uh, Medicare for All is now uh, has a lot of Democrats on board, Less Democratic fun. senators on board. Hmm? A lot of Democratic yeah. senators. Uh, Al Frank, Co Kamala mm -hmm. Harris, uh, all the usual Elizabeth suspects. Warren. Elizabeth Warren. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell me what you think about that. I think I, in, in my notes, I put Robert Goddard's rockets. And what do you mean by that? Robert Goddard was an American rocket pioneer who died in 1945. And he was he was the first guy. And I read his biography when I was 10, I'm sure. And he impressed me. He used to fire arrows into the air because he wanted to go to the moon. Mm -hmm. And he was the first guy that did a liquid fuel rocket that got off the ground. Um, mm -hmm. And he, he 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 was the inspiration for rocket clubs, rocketry clubs. And they were all, and he died again. He died at the end of World War II. He died in 1945. Um, he never saw a rocket leave the Earth's atmosphere, mm -hmm. but he knew that's where we were supposed to go. All the little nerdy kids who joined rocket clubs and grew up to become Ray Bradbury um, yeah, yeah. in the in the 40s and 50s and 60s. Um, all knew the moon is where we're going to go. But yeah. getting there is a bitch. <laughs> it's yeah. really complicated. Yeah. It requires an enormous mm -hmm. investment and lots of new technology and a whole bunch of stuff that we didn't have laying around. But we knew that's where we wanted to go. That, to me, is like universal health care. Yeah, or, or Medicare for All, Medicare however for all. you want to call it. And how we're calling it, I think, is really important. Uh, Democrats are finally learning a couple of things about how the American people trademark, trademark. Uh, because I hate that term in term if you're taking yourself seriously, <laughs> yep. uh, but how uh, the media and public work together and that most people mm -hmm. uh, do not think about politics or give any energy to policy differences. Nope. Uh, I know people in Springfield who have no clue about what next week is going to be. They know nothing but when their next shift is. Right. Part of that is poverty. That's how poverty makes you think. You are simply trying to survive day to day to day. Uh, part of it is just not having the mental capacity or the interest or the uh, wiring or the family background or whatever nature nurture it is to think, OK, what's happening in terms of laws, in terms of governance, in terms of what happens in Washington and around the world actually has an impact on my day to day life. Right. And. So that's where most Americans are. They're about what are we having for dinner, right. not what's happening with health care in a, in a mega sort of way. In a policy way, yeah. Policy way. Right. 
And so when you say Medicare for all, that is that's the bumper sticker. Right. It is a it is a rallying cry and a branding and it is wonderful from my perspective for for me to see Democrats actually sacrificing uh you know the one stitch at a time sweater for we're making a sweater. Right. Right. <laughs> We're, we're here to have a vision for what we want and give it a name. And giving it the name Medicare is so important because that is what people know and what people like, and it is safe. And so, and, and it is something that it is nearly impossible for Republicans and re- right-wing media to argue against because most of their readers and listeners are on Medicare yeah. and love it. Or Medicaid, <laughs> or Medicaid frankly. Or Medicaid for, right. for nursing homes, right. exactly. Uh, And so they uh, I have spoken with some of the most conservative members of our church, Uh uh, people who will stand up and defend Walmart's employment policies (laughs) to your face uh, and uh, talk to them about allowing people earlier than 65 to buy into Medicare and pay for it. Huh? And finding a reasonable price and allowing people that can't get insurance any other way or just want that option to go and buy Medicare from the government. Right. And if they can't afford it, maybe we can give them a subsidy. Well, I didn't get into that. Yeah. But I bet you they'd go for it. I bet you they'd They'd go go for for it. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They they, And they did go for it. They thought, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. If they want to buy it, sure. Why not? Why shouldn't they be allowed to buy it? It's insurance. Yeah. I have an insurance card from them. And if you pay for it, you can just buy it. Well, if their kid and, gets sick, then my kid gets sick, and that's no good. Right, no, and that's the other thing is, you know, you make sure that people that uh, might not otherwise get their shots don't get you sick when you go into Walmart, which is a store you love. Right. And <laughs> you full know? of plagues. It's right. full of smelly people with diseases. No, it's, and yeah, and I mean, we can get into, that That can be a whole other argument about sick leave and about maternal leave and everything sure, else. But, but, but focusing on but Medicare. But the point is, this Medicare is, Medicare is a name that people trust. Right. And so you'd start with a name that people trust with your argument. And, I mean, this is something that Republicans have known and and practiced, you right. know, if Steve Bannon gets 15% of what he wants, it's a win. Right. If we get 15% of what we want, which is what we got with the Affordable Care Act, we were betrayed. I argue even more. We were betrayed. We, and every time we win a little bit, another million people get insurance. Yeah. Um, the other thing about Medicare for all, as opposed to any other plan, is it takes away from the asshole states mm-hmm. the ability to deny care right. to poor people. Right. And uh, this is getting to be an even bigger issue now uh, because we, we one of the things, as you said to me yesterday, one of the things that was supposed to be great about the conservative Affordable Care Act uh-huh. was it was supposed to make insurance portable. Right. And you could go and change jobs and move out of state and you had the free market to go and buy new insurance someplace else. You could start That's your own why business. The Heritage Foundation thought this was a great you idea. You start your own business. You could be an entrepreneur. You could take risks yeah. and not have to worry about your health insurance. Yep. And this was private enterprise is going to help make that possible. Well, it's turning out that people can't move to Virginia. Right. They can't they can't move to Texas where the jobs are mm-hmm. because they don't have Medicaid and my kid needs Medicaid. Right. So, uh, that portability and and that is deeply harming the economies of those states, not only the rural hospitals, which are devastated by not expanding Medicaid, but the, just the ability to have workers draw workers co- to come into those states to start businesses, to join, you know, whatever kind of uh, work environment is going to make that state better and help mm-hmm. that state's economy grow. And uh, it's hurting the, the fact that, that they aren't expanding Medicaid. So you make Medicare for all, or at least, and maybe incrementally, you get a public option where people can buy Medicare from the federal government. Uh, you don't, if you live in Virginia, where they have not expanded Medicaid, mm-hmm. and the federal government is giving everyone a subsidy, you drive into the Medicaid Medicare office in DC uh-huh. and buy your health insurance. Right. It's a federal program. And it's not yeah. I was gonna say on, it, the, on the way okay. there, on the way to Medicare for all, having a public option mm-hmm. available in every market yep. that the government guarantees mm-hmm. uh, gets you eighty percent there. Yeah, and lowers prices. Lowers in, prices in the forces co- if, if yeah. insurance companies want to compete 
with mm-hmm. a low overhead, pretty good plan that uses 3% of premium for administration as opposed to 20, 25%. Great. Mm-hmm. Compete. If you want to get out of the market and go you know, only be a concierge service for rich, rich people, that's fabulous. That's what. That's yeah. why we have public parks and we have private golf courses. That's why we have public right. transportation right. and we have limousines. You get to choose, but you should have the public option. And the, yeah. and, and the, pub- other, the other devil in the detail that I, I always bring up and I'm always really concerned about is how uh, wealthy corporations and wealthy employers – pay into this system yes. because Medicare for all, I, I have no trust in uh, the ability of the government to tax fairly at this point. No. Uh, it is There's too much money in politics and there's too much uh, power uh, um, with corporations not, you know, you can't strike anymore. There's just, there's just such an imbalance. I want a guarantee yes. that wealthy corporations that are sitting on piles of cash, and we know that, because they are releasing just enough cash to look like the good guys in these hurricane <laughs> relief efforts. Right. You know, our local grocery store is matching donations up to a hundred grand. Where does a local grocery store get a hundred grand? They're sitting on it. That's what they've have that in cash on hand. Mm-hmm. So uh, the fact that we have uh, businesses that are sitting, you know, and that's a, the grocery stores are that that tight margin. You know, there's, it's always talking about grocery stores have such a tight margin. They do. Yes. This grocery store has a hundred thousand dollars to give away and good for them i'm glad they're doing it but don't tell me american business that if you can afford to give a million dollars to hurricane relief uh with a day's notice that you can't afford 15 dollars an hour yeah because i don't believe it well i don't believe it for a minute let's let's loop this back uh to two things first of all you know um um, the Affordable Care Act was the was the mercury rocket. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it got us part of the way there. Yeah. Uh, it was not yeah. intended it's for one person. It's incredibly dangerous. It's rickety as shit. Uh, but we can all agree that we want to go to the moon, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and and that healthcare is a right. And, and the Affordable Care Act established that established as a that. predicate. Yes, it did. Healthcare yes, it is did. a right. Now, how do we get there? We can all debate on on that continuum, and we should we should, but we can't have that conversation. Among ourselves, among each other, which should be robust and 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 so forth, um, and pretend that and the other side loves Nazis, but these are right. pretty much two parties in disarray because that's just yes. bullshit. That is absolutely bullshit. Yes. Secondly, Hillary Clinton in her book was was talked about how she wanted to be prepared to pay for everything. Yes, right, she just knew right. uh, eventually. You know, it's easy because and she said this very clearly. She said, "There's no way." Maybe she did. I'm not sure she did, or the interviewer did. I'll be fair about this. But there's no way you can go to the left of Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Because he'll yeah. just say, we'll do more of it and we'll do it for free. Yeah. And well, she said that in the book. Yeah. That, and, that is a quote from the book. That's yeah. And that's fine. And, and for a campaign that's an insurgent campaign that's based on principles, that's that's fine. But she really felt, I have to have pay for for everything. I have to know where the money's coming from, how it'll be spent, what the regulations are going to do. She did her freaking homework to death. And she discovered in the general election – Nobody wanted to hear about. Nobody this. needs that, and that Nobody and that's wanted. what the Democrats need to realize yep. is that the average voter will not get into that those weeds. Right. Even though she is in those weeds, and she should have saved all of that for being president. Yes. And just as you said, you know, we've learned you just lie to people. Lie to people. And I don't want to go that far. Yeah. Uh, Democrats shouldn't just lie to people no. like Donald Trump did. No. Uh- But in terms of just messaging, you should have it simple. And here's what we want to do. And here's where we're going to the moon. Right. You know, and and going to the moon. Jack Kennedy, we're going to the moon. This decade. And the detail in the details you leave to the people that care about that. Who who shit themselves when he said that. You know, like, what? (laughs) You promised (laughs) what? Yep, yeah. that's what we're doing, and yep. and that and and maybe you can't get there in a decade. Maybe it'll take longer. Maybe you know, there's a lot of maybes no, along we, that road. We pushed. We sure did push, didn't we? But we got it. The vision was there, we, yeah. and you have to establish that that is where we are going, and yep. make it so you know, make it such a moral imperative that you'd mm-hmm. have to be a monster to stand against. Yeah. And that's well, and that and that is where uh, these senators, including Bernie Sanders, including Elizabeth Warren, are now planting the flag. We're not planting it, mm-hmm. uh, giving 80 yards to the Republicans, because what we want is really a unicorn and we know we're not going to get there. Right. So let's start at your 20 yard line and let and fight it out from there. We know we're saying this is what we want. We're in touchdown zone. Our vision is universal coverage for everybody. And we're using the word Medicare and we 
dare you to say, but Medicare is awful. Medicare is awful. We don't believe in Medicare. We want it privatized. Go ahead, say it. And see it. See what that gets you yeah. with your own voters. Mm-hmm. See where that gets you with your own voters. Drift glass. Yes. We are running out of time. Yeah. Uh, over. Quickly talk. Tell us about. Um, what did David Brooks build this week? <laughs> David Brooks had an entire column about how floods are uh, an opportunity to cleanse ourselves. And his column, <laughs> his column, I'm sorry. I kid you not. And this is where I had to sort of tell people, I'm not going to lie to you about this. His entire column is as follows. Atlantis, land of contrast. Noah, 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 Noah. Both sides, why won't Obama lead? That was his column. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. was... It was the metaphor of an ark and building an ark. And, and Noah was the imperfect blah, blah, blah. But it really was this long, as I call it, pseudo-rabbinical argle uh, mm-hmm. that led him to say Noah over and over and over and over again. And, of course, in comes the, in comes the razor and the apple, which is where um, many, many people believe one thing and many people believe another. And there's a sensible center that we can all go to. Mm-hmm. And it's just it, – he, he, he is paid for that. And I wrote a, another column today that just says David Brooks is a monster. Because uh, mm-hmm. he's a monster. He's, I believe he's the worst person in the pundit universe. I really do believe that for a lot of reasons. And you can go read it if you like. But my metaphor for the flood was simple. Um, Irma uh, did touch our home as well. Yep, oh, we, had a light, we had a light sprinkling of rain, which was good for the tomato. <laughs> That's right. Irma, Irma. I'm sorry. I want, I want to explain that. Yes. The, the storm system that is Irma went north. Yeah. And actually brushed up against Springfield, Illinois. It did, gently. We and we had mist on the car. We did. We had on the car, a few drops <laughs> of rain uh, yep. that are good for the tomatoes. Yep. And yep. my metaphor is that is what conservatives conservatism is like. There's this mm-hmm. big fucking disaster that doesn't affect me. The yeah. thing that ha- that the outcome of that disaster that the that I'm so far away from it. The only thing that affects me is I get a few sprinkles of water. So it's irrelevant. It doesn't mm-hmm. affect me. Mm-hmm. It's not me. It's not mine. The only thing I know about the storm is it made my, my tomatoes grow a little bit better. And if you're a loser or you know a a, a, a moocher or mm-hmm. weren't smart enough to blah blah blah, well that's on you. Um, mm-hmm. It's not me. Mm-hmm. It's not my country. You know that's that's your problem. That's the metaphor. The metaphor yep. is if you were not hammered by this storm, if all you yep. got was a light sprinkling of rain, then that's someone mm-hmm. else's problem. Not me. Yep. And if you and believe if you that, were born with that you silver spoon in, the, in your mouth, if you were born with that silver spoon in your mouth and you were born on the ark of wealth uh-huh. and you will never know a wet foot in your life, right. uh, everyone else is just a, have their own problems right. and you don't have to deal with it. You're not a member of society. You're just a member of, of this class of people that doesn't have these problems. You're yeah. just a moocher yeah. or an eater or just an, just, yeah. 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 And so if your kid isn't being shot in the street for the color of their skin, being shot in hey, the this is the problem. All lives matter. <laughs> you know, this is what happens, right? You get, well, I don't understand why all lives don't matter because your kid isn't getting shot for the color of their skin. That's why. And we need to fix the problem of the people for whom that is happening. And you're and and of course David Brooks is also building an arc as is the entire media Mass. for the Republican Party to get away from the flood that is Donald Trump. Float away. We're going to float away from and that's what yep. the text of my David Brooks is a monster column is today. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you know what we do each week, Lugal? Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you the listeners. We are multiply blessed this week the internet kitties are the cat posse of echo wood lane a uh, friend of the podcast paul feeds approximately 35 cats every day uh-huh. uh they are some of them are rescue and some of them are feral and some of them are the other thing and whatever uh so far he has trapped and uh taken to the vet for neutering five of them huh? he's working on it as as he can afford to do so uh Thank you, Paul, for what you do. Um, in this particular picture, it is mealtime because, as one kitty noted, look, we come on the porch to eat, not to get our picture taken for some liberal podcast. What were you thinking? <laughs> yeah. You can send your internet kitty or kitties or dogs or whatever to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Please put Internet Kitty in the subject line of your email so I can find it. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. We are working on a Go Postal Unions Mm -hmm. t-shirt. We are working on a The Left 
uh, taking shit for being right since before you were born t-shirt. Bumper sticker too. And bumper stickers. We are uh, welcoming your ideas. Both sides don't. Uh, one, both sides don't. T-shirt. Yeah, big time. Both sides don't. T-shirt. Uh, one uh, listener wrote to me last week and said, am I the only person who yells at uh, her listening device it's not safe for work. <laughs> and I said, no, people yell, but I'm an independent <laughs> at, their, at their radio or, or listening device. And that's not uh, scriptural. Both sides don't. That's not scriptural. Everybody take a drink. Uh, we, we have a lot of catchphrases. We do. That, Apparently uh, we... People yeah. feed back to us on Twitter and on other social media all the time. Uh, the, one, the one that I hear the most is... Uh, when somebody they catch somebody saying, I'm a constitutional conservative independent, and it's just, woo, I know what to say to that person. Uh-huh. I'm an independent. I'm independent. Yeah. <laughs> I really am. You have never voted for a Democratic president in your life. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. And don't forget our Amazon link at our website. We believe in buying local And we also believe in shopping Amazon with our link. If your alternative is a big box store, the link to our Zazzle page is there at our website. And that's where you can get what our middle child calls the merch. Merch, merch. Mom, you've got to have merch. Got to have more merch. She takes credit Uh, for all of this, by the way. She she does. She takes credit for everything. I told you years ago (laughs) you should have merch. (laughs) Merch. But we didn't have an angel. We didn't have theology. No, now we have theologop creating this for us, yeah. and we deeply appreciate her. I want to do a shout out to Heather at Crooks and Liars who came to visit us in Springfield this week. Hey Heather, Hi, Heather. hey Heather, how you doing? Hey Heather, uh, I also want to say uh, hello to our listener who listens to us uh, on his evening commute on Fridays, and he wrote us a letter because the podcast was late last week or two weeks ago. And he didn't have a podcast to listen to during his evening commute. And he wrote us to say, look, I want quantity, not quality. (laughs) (laughs) Super size it, blue gal. Come on. (laughs) So uh, we're going to try our best to get these shows out before, uh, you know, 530 on Eastern time if we can. I I understand you need that for your commute home. Got it. We have, you guys are there for us, so we want to be there for you. (laughs) Exactly. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can too. See our website, professionalleft.blogspot.com for details. Both our PayPal and postal information and Zazzle link and Amazon link, everything is there. It's at proleftpod.com. And please share our show on Facebook or Twitter. And thank you for doing that. We really appreciate it. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties think that Cassini's interplanetary Viking funeral is just about the coolest thing they've ever seen. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017 Drift Class Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters. <laughs>